Welcome everybody to this video cheat sheet and we're going to be configuring a default route to a BGP peer. First could do the baseline show IP route 0, .0, 0, 0, 0 to see if there's already a default route floating around our network. Then we're going to enable the debug IP BGP updates command before we propagate a default route so that we can see uh, how the router processes the updates and, and makes the changes. And then we're going to finish up with the verification show command to make sure that when we propagate a default route that it's actually making it throughout our network. Okay, so here on router 2 and router 6 is where we're going to be propagating a default route from, router 2 and router 6. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a show IP route for the default here on router 1 and it's network not in table because we're not we don't have a default route floating around yet in our network and I'm also good, going to do the debug IP BGP um, and then the neighbor for router 2 updates so as router 2 starts to propagate a default route across this eBGP peer uh, router 1 will will see those updates coming in so on router 2, the, the way you propagate a default router, there's actually a couple of ways to do it, but uh, the, the way that we're going to do it in this video cheat sheet is you specify your neighbor. So in this case, it's router 1. We're doing this on router 2. So you specify your neighbor, and then you put in the command default originate. Now, if you went through the OSPF video cheat sheets, you may recognize this command of default originate. Now, BGP treats it a little bit different than OSPF. Uh, I'm not going to go into what the differences are here, but uh, you will recognize some of the differences once again if you did the OSPF video cheat sheets. So I'm going to go to R2 and put in the command default originate. Now I'm going to go back over to router 1 and do my show IP route for 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 0 .0 and we're going to see if anything has changed. Now as you can see here from the debug, from router 2, so once again I'm on router 1 now, so from router 2 we received an update for next hop from 2 and what did they receive? Well they received a default route. So that's what the debug output told us. So let's see what the show output is and now we do have in our forwarding table a default route that we've learned via BGP from router 2. So let's go over to router 2. Well, router 2 is propagating a default route to router 1. It's probably going to have it in its forwarding table, right? So let's look at that. And no, it does not. Show IP route for 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0 network not in table. We specifically advertised a default route from router 2 to router 1. So that doesn't mean it's going to be sitting in its global route table. It specifically advertised it to router 1. So let's go over to router 6. And you do the exact same thing. Up here between router 2 and router 1 was an eBGP session. And we use the neighbor command and then default originate. Well, you do the exact same thing if you want to originate a default route in, via IBGP. You specify your neighbor, in this case our route reflector, because R6 is a route reflector client of router 4, and you do the exact same command default originate. So this is how once again you originate a default route to a neighbor via BGP, whether that's eBGP or IBGP. So let's put that in router 6. And now I'm going to go back over to router 2 and we're going to look at the output again. See before we had network not in table, but now I'm going to do the command and we now have it in our forwarding table. There's the default route known via BGP1 with a distance of 200 which means it learned it via IBGP. The originating router is router 6 which is where we did this from. We did it from router 6 and it sees that it learned it from its route reflector router 4. So it learned it from its route reflector with the ultimate source being router 6. So that is how you propagate a default route to a BGP peer. We did the baseline show IP route command to make sure that there wasn't a default route floating around. We did a debug command to see how things changed. We propagated a default route and then verified that, that default route was now in our table.